G'day guys, Ronnie Dale, Four Wheeling Australia. Check out what we have right here to play with today. The 110 Land Rover Defender, the 2020 version. It's only been in Australia for a short period of time. I could always just pull out the spec sheet and read all the boring stats on it. I'm not gonna do that in this video. In this video, you are going to see my experience and my thoughts on the Land Rover Defender. I can already tell you, just by driving this vehicle from the service station to here, which was about five kilometers, this is not going to be your average review. There is so much tech in this vehicle that is four-wheel driving related. There's a lot to show you guys. So let's just get straight into this. Now we're only gonna go down to about 30 PSI because we have 20 inch rims. That's one thing I'm a little bit skeptical on this vehicle. It has these massive rims. We don't have a lot of sidewall to play with for an off-road vehicle, but we'll see how we go. This particular Defender we had out for today was fitted with an onboard compressor. They don't come standard with this, but it is a pretty cool option to have and it has a specific mounting point. We are now going to raise the height of the vehicle. We can do that by pressing a button here. So if we press this button here, we're now raising the vehicle up in height. As we raise the suspension on the 110 Defender, it shows us the approach, departure and ramp over angle changing, indicating that we are now at full height and we have more clearance. With our gain height from the airbag suspension, we now need to select four wheel drive low range. To do that, you need to be neutral, then you can select low range. Low range selected, we are ready to go. What I just noticed, when you put it in low traction mode, which is also low range, the downhill assist is automatically activated. And I think we can adjust the speed that we travel at here too. Unfortunately, we didn't have a user manual with the vehicle and it's a very complicated system. Well, the camera's showing me what's in front of me. So that's my wheel track and that's what's in front of me. That's pretty cool. You'll notice that the new Land Rover has a very reactive traction control system. It needs to sense the wheel spinning before it reacts. So climbing is a little bit slow going. Making a lot of noises. I'm hearing a lot of clicking and ticking. I think it's um, applying brakes and power to different wheels. I do feel a little bit uneasy though because I'm not used to wheels slipping. So this thing is doing its own thing, so I just have to get used to it. Um, so far it hasn't let me down. It's definitely slipping wheels and lifting a lot of wheels, but nothing is actually stopping it. It keeps going. <laughs> that front was majorly off the ground then. Now I do find this auto though, it kind of sends you backwards a little bit as you're trying to drive forward. So if you slow down, it sends you back a little bit like, like this. See, now I'm going backwards a bit. So the old Defender used to rely on flex. The new Defender relies on tech. What I've got is a scent control or assist and low range gearing and it just it just does its own thing like all, all i have to do is point and shoot make sure i don't bottom out on anything and if the wheels slip the defender sorts it out for me this is the land rover 110 clearance it's actually pretty good so because it is IFS front and IRS rear, independent suspension, front and rear. We have so much clearance because of that. There's no diff pumpkin hanging down. 
having high-tech airbag suspension that can raise the vehicle up and down does come at a cost and the cost is flex. This vehicle flexes about as much as an ironing board or a surfboard. However, it doesn't seem to matter because the four-wheel drive system keeps it going. I sort of touch on the interior of this vehicle. The interior is, it's pretty damn cool. I like all the trims. I like the inside of this vehicle more than the outside. That's for sure. It, they kind of try to keep with the Land Rover sort of look with all these little bolts and stuff. Um, there is checker plate on the hood or the bonnet, I should say, but it's plastic. I reckon they could have made that aluminium or something. Uh, but look, the cameras and everything, the steering wheel is awesome. There's not much in here that anyone would dislike. It is so cool. Really futuristic as well. Might gear up here, going a bit slow. Oh, we got a water puddle. Let's get this thing wet. Now I'm excited. The new Land Rover Defender can also tell you how deep the water is with its wade sensing technology. Two things though. One, it's a little bit distracting. You should be looking at where you're going. And two, if you're already in deep water, you don't need a system to tell you that it's deep. You're already in it. I'm trusting downhill assist now. Seeing what it does. Yeah. Is there a way to slow the downhill assist down? I'm trying to figure that one out. The brakes are very touchy on this rocky stuff. Very touchy. All right, that was the hill test done, up and down. One thing I didn't really like too much was the jarringness of the brakes. They're very touchy. Without the user manual, we couldn't figure out how to get into rocks and ruts mode. So the Defender didn't get a chance to really prove what it could do going downhill. That said, however, it really highlights the fact that this vehicle is highly reliant on its four-wheel drive system. You can't just put it in four-wheel drive and expect a smooth ride. We're gonna to head to Lance on Sand Dunes. We're gonna open it up on the sand and see how we go there. But before that, Let's do the whip around. Time for the quick whip around. I haven't even spoken about what type of Defender it is because there are a few different types. There are three different options for the engine, two different diesel options and one petrol option. This is the 240 diesel SE version. The 240 having 177 kilowatts and 453 newton meters of torque that's off the top of my head it'll be on the screen if i'm correct or incorrect around here we have 32 inch tires which it comes with standard and 20 inch rims you don't have much sidewall to play with which is not really too much of a problem on sand but it can be a bit of a problem with rocks and stuff you can't lower your tires too much as we experienced earlier the rock step seems to be pretty good we have rested it accidentally on one rock earlier today Getting up cameras there's one right here left hand side mirror right hand side mirror at the front and last but not least right there it's the four camera locations that gives us that whole view around the vehicle this camera i'm looking at right now is awesome for when you want to negotiate really close to to say like a branch or a stump or something as you can see right here that shrub right there I can see the proximity of it to the tyre. Now, I haven't got up to it yet. Let's have a look outside. So there we are. That's the shrub we looked at. On the inside, it shows me how close around to the tyre. So if you're in danger of staking your tyre from something sticking out on the, side of the, on the side of the track that you could see before, but now you can't see because of the, because of the bonnet, well, that camera is going to help you. This mirror up here, as you can see, Chris is behind us, the camera guy. If I do that, we get a good view of the back. 
So here we are in the back. There are five seats in the vehicle as it is right now, but under here, we've got two more seats, which we discovered when we first acquired the vehicle to have a look, look at it. They fold up quite nice and easy. Now there is lack of space there. So this is definitely children's seats. Definitely not adults. Things that I've noticed, we've got checker plate here. That kind of goes back to the old Land Rover Defenders with a checker plate here, although this is plastic. Around the side here, we've got this grill here, which has also been on previous ones. We've got the white roof, which is a classic Land Rover Defender thing. And the boxy look as well. Rear tire location, that's a classic Land Rover Defender thing, not having it underneath or something like that. Oh, and then one more thing I nearly forgot about. The classic old window. So I've used the word classic a lot. Do you guys think that this has enough heritage from the old Defender? That is the question. Only you can answer if you're an old Land Rover Defender owner. Testing out drive high range on the sand. It's already locked the center, so it's detected that we are on loose traction surfaces. Seems to be quite responsive. Our tire pressures are down to 18 psi. Always get out and check dunes before you drive down them. That's what I just did then. Park brake off into drive, downhill assist. Let's do this. She's a steep one. Woohoo! Yeah, that is cool. I'll take downhill assist off. Let's get some speed up then. Traction control is off, downhill assist is off because it works for uphill as well. Here we go. We're getting closer, but. All right, finally worked out how to put it into sand mode. I probably should have done this while we were driving earlier. There's no handbook with this vehicle, so I've had to just Google it. Unfortunately, I wish I had it earlier because I probably could have driven those rocks a bit more gentle on the way down. But here we go. Now we'll try. It's been no up. Made absolutely no difference. More momentum then. Come on, surely we can get this thing up. There we go. There we go. Uh, well, it can do it. So I guess it's the driver. Is it really the driver? So was it the driver or the vehicle? Well, in this case, it's the driver's fault. My fault. Not knowing how to use all the settings but it does highlight the fact you cannot just take this vehicle onto sand in normal four-wheel drive mode. You have to use the system. There we go. Downhill assist. Oh yeah, there we go. Downhill assist is on. Straight down to June. There we go. The short wheelbase handled that nice, that sharp turn on top of the dune. Not something I recommend anyone doing, <laughs> by the way. Running out of daylight too. So I 
we've done everything that I need to do out here to sort of get a feel of it on the sand. I mean, unless you know that full drive system, you can get yourself stuck pretty easy in this vehicle, I will say that. But once you know the system, once you learn the vehicle, it's actually very easy to drive and it's quite capable. Alright guys, it's time for the conclusion. It's a couple of days later, I've had time to sort of really think about it because on the spot, you don't really get to absorb everything that you've done in that one day. Now we had a massive day with this vehicle and by the way, I'm about to lose my voice, so let's get to it. The conclusion, the pros, cons and a couple of final words. The first pro I'll talk about is the clearance. Awesome clearance because we have IFS front and rear. So that may be a disadvantage in other ways. For example, the flex, there wasn't much flex at all, but the Pro was supreme clearance. The interior, absolutely awesome. That's probably one of the best interiors I've seen on any vehicle that I've ever seen, to be quite honest. Now, I wasn't digging the outside look too much, but the interior, first class, I reckon. In style, that is. Another Pro, I guess, is for those people who are looking at buying a Discovery. If you can't afford a Land Rover Discovery, well, you might be able to afford a Defender. To me, they seem really similar in looks and feel and everything. So it's almost like an affordable discovery. But let's talk about the cons now. And from the last pro, I said, well, it's like an affordable discovery. I think this is where they may have hit the mark wrong, but it depends on what they were trying to do. So the old Defender was completely different to what's new now. But it is 2020, it is the future. I'm used to driving an old 79 series Land Cruiser, very basic, very similar to the Defender, very basic. But the new Defender completely flipped around. Floor tech, no flex. Anyone who owns an old Defender, I don't think that they're gonna wanna buy the new Defender. But I don't think that's the target market. Another con, in my opinion, was there was too much tech. Now, we only have one day with this vehicle, so we had to try and learn this tech in one day, which was near impossible. And I struggled a bit to drive up these sand dunes, as you saw earlier, took eight attempts. And that's because I couldn't figure out how to get it into sand mode. So you can't just drive it in four wheel drive in, on all surfaces, you actually have to go through the menu and find what you need. Once you learn how to drive it, it's quite capable, but you can't just jump in it and go four wheel driving like any old four wheel drive. Which leads me on to my next con. It was frustrating at times, trying to work through all that menu. No, it's all, it, it's breaking and I can't stop it. Tra traction control is off. Our pill assist is off. Cause you, you're trying to concentrate on driving, but then you also got to go through the menu and you know, so again, once you get used to it, I'm sure it won't be that bad because you know what you're doing. But when you first get in this vehicle, you've really got to practice four wheel driving before you take that thing off on a trip, I'd say. And the final con, the 20 inch rims. Now that's only with the SE version or the S version. So if you go for the this base version, the entry level, you get 18 inch rims with 32 inch rubber. That's actually not too bad. Just be careful when you drive with low pressures and those big rims, because the problem you may encounter is the compression of the tires too much because there's not enough sidewall and you can pinch the bead and that's when you get tire damage or even rim damage. Look, I'm sure you can downgrade your 20 inch rims to an 18 inch, but those 20 inch rims, you don't want to be taking that onto some hard stuff. Look, we proved it's fine for the sand dunes and some of the stuff we did, but I would, be, I would not be taking those 20 inch rims out, out in the middle of nowhere. So I guess the question is going to be from you guys, some of you guys, you're probably going to ask me, would I buy this vehicle? And I'm just going to say this straight off, every single vehicle review that I'm going to do here on forward, I'm not going to tell you that. My choice of vehicle shouldn't influence to what you guys decide. I'm going to show you what the vehicle can do. I'm going to give you my opinions as it goes, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to tell you if this is a vehicle I would buy or if I wouldn't buy and you guys should make that decision on your own. So, what do you guys think of the Defender anyway? Would you buy this vehicle? And do you think it retains the heritage of the Defender? Only you guys can tell me that. See you next time.